Hi everybody, very welcome to yet another live stream here on the Mentor Pilot channel. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. It's great to see so many nationalities being in here because as you all know, we are in troubling, troubling times. I can't believe that it's been a week, well almost a week since I did my last live stream. I actually did it on Wednesday. Um, there's so many things that are happening that has happened and that will continue to happen during the coming weeks. Uh, which are well outside of anything that I have ever seen during my 18 years as a airline pilot and that's why I'm here today. I want to be able to answer your questions for as much as I can. I'm betting there's a lot of people out there maybe are in training or thinking about going into training or uh, are already professional pilots or you're just interested about what's going on and I want to have this more as a discussion between you and me than me just answering questions. So we'll see how this works. Um, the way that this normally works, guys, if this is the first time here, is that uh, I will try to answer as many questions as I can from the normal chat. However, they, as you can see, it's just falling it's hundreds and hundreds of questions, so I won't be able to answer them all. If you have a question that is really, really dear to you that you want me to really focus on, well, then you can use the super chat. That's that little dollar sign. It means that you are... Um, you are um, given some money to support the channel and it will highlight the question to me which means that I will definitely answer it. I will be here answering your questions for the next 45 minutes to an hour that's normally how long my my voice um, survives uh, but I'm here for you guys this is this is your time and I hope that as many people as possible um, feel that they um, that they can participate in this and ask questions okay so um, I have one super chat question already which is a hot dog I do um, appreciate the hot dog I always do um, if you want to give me super stickers that just keeps me happy as well and um, before we go basically I want to also send a huge thank you to my patreon crew right you guys who are out there uh, you know who you are um, right now I am on furlough, which means that I'm on unpaid leave. I don't get any money from my employer for the next two months. Um, and it's likely that that will probably be extended as well as part of this coronavirus um, pandemic. And because of that, I am actually surviving. My, ch my uh, family is surviving on the YouTube channel. Uh, which means you guys who are um, who, <laughs> who are supporting through the live stream are doing a fantastic thing and my patrons who are there every month to preview my videos um, and to, to support the channel. You are basically giving the financial freedom for me to concentrate on my channel and to give more stuff to you. If it weren't for, for you, I would have to go out and find something else to, to bring in the money. Uh, but the YouTube channel are actually supporting us now and all of you, my patrons, you who support on live streams, you are doing uh, a great job. And on behalf of me and my family, I want to thank you guys um, so that I can continue doing what I do best, which is informing you guys. And that's going to be more important for the next couple of weeks. Um, I, you will see an increase in, um, in videos coming from me. Um, I will not do daily videos, but I'm going to do videos where I try to be a spokesperson for, for example, the training industry when people reach out to me because they want to get information out to you guys, I will facilitate that as much as possible, um, both through the YouTube channel as a mentor pilot, but also from the airline pilot club because we are creating the club to be the place for you guys to, to go if you have questions. I mean, we want to be a support function for Anyone who wants to become a pilot or who are training to become a pilot or are, you know, applying for a job. So I will, together with Andy O'Shea, which is my co-founder for the APC, we will be doing our utmost for the next couple of uh, couple of weeks to try to give you as much information, as much positive feedback as we possibly can. So come in with questions to me through the app. If you get the Mentor Aviation app, which is free to download, guys, by the way, if you go to the support feedback, uh, sorry, uh, provide feedback function in the settings of the app, you can send a message to me there uh, or just tag at mentor in the chat and ask what questions you want. Maybe you're in training and you desperately want to know how this is going to affect you. Let us know so that we can can start answering your questions. It's it's really important because it is the kind of job that that we really want to do uh, from the Airline Pilot Club. The, the, um, the website airlinepilotclub.com is not up yet. Uh, we were still working on it when this horrible thing hit. Um, so, but we will try to open up parts of it 
so that you guys will have something to um, to reach to through the coming weeks. Okay. So Grant Renny, thank you very much for your support. Uh, Karsten, Gilles, great to have you here, Karsten. Um, no question for me today, just saying hello. Well, thank you, Karsten. If you have any more questions, you know where to find me. Grant Renny is giving me another hot dog. Uh, that's going to add to my already substantial belly. Um, but thank you. Um, Sam Petros is giving full support. Sam, thank you for all that you do, um, especially in times like this. It's extremely important. And Sam, um, together with my other uh, administrators in the app, is doing an absolutely fantastic job to find really, really interesting and pertinent news now during this hard time. So if you want a news flow that gives you everything you need to know from what's happening in the airline industry, well, Sam is the one that is providing it to, together with with all my other administrators to you guys so he's doing a fantastic job and a good applaud from me and probably from the rest of the people as well uh, Maurizio uh, Maurizio Muriano thank you very much as well 737 max any progress yeah there is significant progress going on on 737 max in the background um, they're doing test flights as far as I know now there has been some setbacks as you would expect um, but uh, I think that they are more or less on schedule and hopefully when this whole coronavirus has blown past um, we will have a, a up and running 737 max as well that uh, that we all can enjoy so um, we don't I don't know if there's been any official uh, date set I don't think Boeing is doing that anymore but towards summer early uh, autumn is what they're what, what I heard last time I heard anything um, so that's I think what they're looking for anything that's early and that would be seen as a bonus uh, Valaha media how corona affects airline business uh, very very badly all right there's no there's no sugar coating in that this is possibly the the worst um, the worst catastrophe to hit the airline business in in our lifetime in modern in the modern history of aviation. Um, a couple of, well, the last few years when I've been doing live streams, people have been asking me, so what does the job prospects look like? How likely is it that I'm gonna get a job and things when I get into the industry? And I've always said that if you just look at the background figures, then um, during 2021, 22, we're going to have a huge lack of pilots just because of retirement rates and because of um, other kind of other factors that is affecting it. But mainly the fact that the baby boomers from the 1950s are going into retirement around 21 to 25. Uh, now, I've always said that that's the indications that we have, but something can happen. You know, there's always an unknown when it comes to predicting the airline business because the airline business is always the first one to get hit when uh, when something huge happens, wars, um, trade war, things like that. And I said that there's also a possibility that something can happen that I cannot foresee, and this is it. All right, the uh, the the coronavirus and the closing down of borders that we're seeing, and the people getting afraid of traveling, uh, being stuck somewhere else. Um, this is far worse than anything that I've ever seen because it not only affects our actual possibility to fly, as in countries that are closing borders, but also uh, it affects the uh, the amount of passengers, customers for the airline business. And it does so not only in just in one country, because that's typically what these kind of crises do, that they close down one country or there's a war in one part of the world, so we cannot overfly a certain airspace or something. No, this is globally. All of a sudden, all countries are on lockdown, more or less, and it's just spreading around. Um, uh, so the airline business is shaking in its foundations, all right? Um, what will happen from this? Almost impossible to say. What I can say is that it is unlikely that the governments around the world would allow the airline sector to take an enormous hit, similar to what happened in 2008 with the banks when they rescued larger banks. Um, the airlines are critical for the infrastructure, for the working of the entire world economy. We are the ones that transport the parts throughout the world. We are the ones that, that send people between countries to do business with each other. So uh, it will not be an absolute apocalypse of the airline industry, but it is likely that players that had a low amount of money that was struggling economically before this is going to do so even more now, unless they get some kind of government bailout um, it's likely that we will see quite a few bankruptcies coming from this. Now, is that negative or positive? 
on a short term, it's probably very negative from the from a job prospect. It's going to hit the the business, the working conditions for pilots quite hard. That's my prediction anyway. However, on a long term, um, it might. It's probably going to go back to normality. Um, I wouldn't say fairly soon, but I would say within a year or so, we should probably be back to where we are, providing that we can get through this reasonably quick. Okay, providing that these lockdowns stops um, within, let's say, three months or so, then within a year, a year and a half, we would be back again. And, you know, the airlines that survive, obviously, is going to take market from the ones that didn't. Um, people are still going to continue to fly and there's going to be more jobs coming up. But in the short term, there's going to be a downturn and you all need to be prepared for that. We all need to be resilient now. It means that people like me who have loads and loads of experience, I am going to be possibly on unpaid leave for uh, for a few months. Um, my colleagues around the world will face similar things. Um, Scandinavian Airlines System, SAS, just now um, announced that they are putting their whole fleet on the ground from tomorrow. So that's unheard of, that an airline just ceases operation without going bankrupt. They just put everything on ground. We can expect more airlines to do similar things because to run an airline with no passengers is bleeding money. Uh, and it's better to just clamp down, sit down with, and you know, mothball the, the airplanes from, you know, from... Uh, from a fiscal point of view and wait this thing out. So I, I, I expect us to see that, which is something that we've never seen in our lifetime. So this is, like I said, uncharted territory. And um, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to help each other out. We're gonna have to stand up as a group, as pilots to help our employers, um, our employers to help the employees as much as possible. And this is a time to show unity, to show what we as a human race are made of, that we can help each other out. Now we have a common enemy, which is not another human, it's a virus. We should do what we can to sort that out. All right, and we need to show resilience, we need to show strength, we need to show good character, and we need to show that we can support each other. That is extremely important for the next couple of months, right? So that was the longest uh, answer to a question that I think I've ever given on a live stream so far. Brian Blazer, how did the 737 get the nickname the Guppy? I didn't even know the 737 had the nickname the Guppy. When I started, it was called the Bobby. Um, and where those nicknames come from, it's hard to say. I said the Guppy probably is to the smaller uh, part, the, like the, the 737. 400 and 600, the, the shorter ones, um, called the little pig as well in, in some cases because they're just short and shabby. That might be the reason, but I hadn't heard Guppy before. Pulistaya uh, Parek, what is your view on a paperless cockpit? I view that as being very positive. Uh, we have the technology now to have everything on our, you know, this is my EFB. This is my, my what I have in my cockpit. I have all of the chart, all of the uh, performance programming. I have all of the high level chart, low level chart, all my manuals, uh, all of the um, correspondence from the airline, everything is on there. So that's extremely good. And the fact that we have two of them means that if one breaks down, you still have the other one. Um, so there is a there is a, like a redundancy system built into it, which is great, all right? Big, a lot of paper is uh, is a lot of problems. I just hope that we can go further towards paperless cockpit. Captain Berto, first of all, thank you very much, all of you guys. I'm going to try to answer these questions as quickly as possible so I can take some from the normal chat as well. Hola, senor. Uh, I am just an aviation enthusiast and I enjoy the content. Well, thank you, Captain Berto. Um, I just had a, the loveliest, loveliest call with um, two other aviation enthusiasts in the United States. Um, that were, they're actually engineers, NASA engineers, fantastic couple of people. I love speaking to you guys and see what you enjoy of the content I'm creating. And they were, it, it was a married couple that was so sweet, so sweet to, to each other and to talk to. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed doing that. Um, and by the way, that's, that's um, from one thing to another, that's another perk that, that the, my Patreon crew gets as well. When you're over the $10 per month uh, support level, then we can schedule a, uh, a Skype call and I, we can talk one-on-one -on -one about what your, uh, what your ideas are, what your questions are and something. It's something that I, I keep to my Patreon crew because otherwise we just get too much of it, all right? But 
but I do have if you have if you want to check out my Patreon crew and you want to support the channel and the kind of stuff that I do, it's www.patreon.com slash mentorpilot and you'll find all of that what you get in there. Uh, Wild, <laughs> Wide World West. I can never get that right. That nickname is so hard to pronounce. Um, Wide World West. Thank you for your support once again. I'm doing my flight training while working full time. So it'll be a four or five years before I have my 1500 hours that are required. I'm hopeful that the industry will be recovered by then and the jobs will be available. Yeah, I'd say on a four or five year timeline, um, generally the aviation world moves in four year cycles. So you'll go from from like a, like a top to a bottom in about four years. And But that's, of course, without any of these great disturbances. Something like the coronavirus is not part of that. But we would do for a downturn anyway. It, it's been a very long bull market for the, um, for the aviation world. And it was due to kind of start coming down slowly. But all po- uh, everything was pointing at a very, very soft downturn up until about three months ago when this coronavirus appeared from nowhere and started raging havoc. Um, Right now, like I'm in quarantine right now together with my family. If you guys, by the way, um, I am, I'm going to do some more like videos about what I do together with my family and things. I'm not going to put that on my YouTube channel because I don't want to saturate it with content that is not aviation related. But if you look for um, my son's YouTube channel, uh, Luca Dicrus, he's my 10 year old son. Um, we are going to do, we're going to try to do some fun stuff to show what we're doing during this outbreak, how we're coping to be kind of cooped up together as a family inside of a house, not being able to walk outside. Uh, so look up Luca Dicrus, all right? Um, Sam, if you're there, um, if you can find the uh, channel Luca Dicrus, the, uh, the, um, uh, the web address to it, sorry, the URL, and send it out in the chat so that people can find it. Um, there's some cute videos that he's already done there. He's doing some, some gaming videos and stuff, but remember he's only 10, so be gentle on him. But that's where we're gonna put some of that so that we don't um, saturate this channel. But yeah, to answer your question, uh, Wild World West, you, uh, um, four or five years, you will definitely see a completely different landscape than now. We might have some of the airlines that we take for granted now might be gone, some others might have popped up. Um, the, the airlines that are doing very well at the moment, the strong players out there, they're likely to be even stronger in four to five years. Um, but best of luck. Um, I, I'm not even sure that that 1500 rule will stand that long. We'll see. So I'm so behind on the super chats now, so it's, it's embarrassing. I'm going to try to get back here. Um, so Daniel Trappe, uh, thank you. Watch your channel for ages. Not much to hope. Uh, it helps this time. Sorry, not much, but hope it helps at this time. Yeah, I mean, what I want to do with my channel for the next coming weeks is to become, uh, like I said, uh, a source of information for people, a source of confidence for people. I I pride myself. Sorry, I've just eaten. <laughs> I pride myself on being as true as I can without bullshitting people. Right. That this means that I truly have a positive view on life and a positive view on what you as an individual can achieve. Uh, I believe that obstacle makes us stronger, um, but I also believe that it will slow us down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create some videos that will tell you my view on the story. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I put up a picture uh, with a little bit of text about that this morning, about the way that I view this. You can expect more of that coming up. Those of you who've been following my channel for years, you know that I have um, that my started off was a lot of inspirational videos, a lot about what you can do as an individual, how strong you can be if you give your all and if you focus on the right things, not the wrong things. It's all in you to to get yourself through this. If you are, for example, just finished out of flight school and now the whole world seems to be collapsing, even if it is, you can get through it by focusing on the right stuff and prioritizing the right things. And that's the kind of videos that I will be doing now on top of my technical videos that will be coming. Um, But I will also try to interview influential people within the airline industry to try to get their take on what's happening and how you should be thinking according to them. D. Anna, just wanted to let you know, uh, to let you and all others in aviation 
sorry, just wanted to let you and all others in aviation that I'm thinking about you and hoping for the best for you. I fear it will affect my business too. Yeah, there's no question. Like no one will be left unscathed by this. If if what happens here in Spain is any model of what's going to happen in the rest of the world, right now we have a country that is sitting inside of their houses, a whole country. This is true for Italy as well, where in two weeks no one can leave unless we want to go and buy groceries, go to the pharmacy, uh, take care of our elderly or go to the uh, hospital. Apart from that, we're not allowed to be out in the streets. The police are out patrolling, make sure people are not out, the military as well. Uh, and they're doing so for a good reason. Like, there's no one questioning this. This has to be done um, to stop it. And of course, I've said it many times, and people will be saying, well, isn't that overdoing it? And that depends on how you see it. Like, we could skip this, and 80% of the population would not be severely affected by the coronavirus. But the problem is that the the the, the top layer, they like the, the elderly, the, the frail, the ones that are in the risk groups, who are going to be dying in thousands, if not the millions, if we do, don't do this. Every one of you will have a relative or someone you know that's going to disappear with this virus, unless this is stopped. So this is why we're doing this, is to make sure that the healthcare professionals are not... Uh, being put into undue risk so that they can take care of the enormous influx of new patients that are coming so that the uh, healthcare industry doesn't collapse on itself and we all understand that okay this is this is why there's no one um, there, there's no one I think questioning this but of course it will have an enormous uh, economical impact on the you know tourism industry hotel industry travel industry and then all of the others that doesn't get their part and in spain all of the others that doesn't get any customers because everyone is cooped up inside so you know this is not something to take lightly for sure and i do feel with everybody but i do think that we will get through this i'm fairly very confident actually that we will uh, Robert Schmidt, just want to say thank you. Fingers crossed. Yeah, and there's a lot of fingers crossed out there now, and mine sure are. Justin, hi. Thanks for all you do. Just showing support. Thank you, Justin. It's all approach appreciated. Ty Gay. Sorry, T Tiga. Tiga. I hope that's how to pronounce it. Out of job in the entertainment industry until April in Nashville. Still pushing for my first solo cross country this week, though. Stay safe. You too. And those are some like th those are the, the sunshine stories. The fact that people are still pushing through, people are still showing resilience, and then going for the targets, even though right now it looks a little bit dark. But um, best of luck with your with your solo, um, and it's going to be an absolutely fantastic um, thing when you do it. You will always remember how you felt when that first time when your instructor get out of the seats and you realize that you put the trust on but there's no one there to tell you what to do and what not to do like the feeling is something i am thinking of mine now and it, it brings like it makes the hair stand up in my arm and it's a lot of hair so um best of luck with that but remember that your instructor will never let you go unless he has full or she has full confidence in you so once you do go on your solo you are ready for it and enjoy it uh, Eric Sellers, thank you very much. Uh, now, I see that that was an empty uh, message, which brings me, makes me think that Eric maybe had a message. If you did, then I can't, like, there's no way for me to find it. So you're going to have to go into the Mentor Aviation app. Once again, it's free to download. Go to settings, go to submit feedback, write super chat question in the, in the uh, line, and I, I will answer it uh, in a written way to you. Okay? Thank you for your support. Rabbit, keep it up. I will. You should see. You should see that my, my wife is actually she's our the family's PT now. We have to get moving. Of course, we cannot be outside. So we're doing these like training sessions with my wife um, every other day with the kids, which is hilarious. Um, maybe I should be live streaming that. Actually, I should do that on my on my son's channel. Like training with mentor every other day, and you guys should all be there to keep it up. Especially those of you who are in quarantine together with me. Uh, Gaia G68. Hi Peter. How long can you be grounded before your flying skills get rusty? You have to be recertified when you come back. That's a great question, and it actually warrants a full video. Um, I can be um, theoretically about 90 days, all right, because then I need three takeoffs and landings. 
um, which can be done in a simulator. So I would have to, after 90 days, would have to be taken into a simulator. Before that, though, most airlines have more stringent rules. So what we say in my airline is that if you've been gone for more than 45 days, which I will be after my two months of unpaid leave, which I had anyway, by the way, uh, I would have to fly with a line trainer. So a line training captain, I can go out, I can fly with them, they're gonna be in the right seat, just to make sure that I'm not too rusty because you do lose skills, you forget things, uh, and of course you need to be 100% sharp when you're flying. So once I've done that, that's fine. Um, if it's longer than that, it's likely that I'll be taken in for a recency sim, which is basically um, like a, a mock OPC, where you do a flying, maybe a, a non-precision approach, circling, an engine failure after takeoff, single engine ILS, single engine go around, single engine landings, and just general kind of get a feel for the aircraft, and then you can go back out online again. So that's generally what tends to happen. But rusty, you start to be after, after a month or two, um, no matter how much experience you have. Vakar Khan, thank you very much for your support. Uh, Graham Bulger, hi mentor. I'm about to start my multi-engine IR and I'm looking at my APS MCC and wondering if it has an influence on employment or if it's worth doing an MCC on multiple types like the A320 and Boeing 737. Right, just give me some coffee. Mm, ambrosia. Okay, so here it is. Focus on the APS MCC. All right, that's the best advice that I can give when it comes to the MCC. Try to find a, a provider of the APS MCC, which is good. There's not too many of them uh, that do APS MCC, and all of the ones that I've been in contact with are very highly qualified uh, training centers. Um, don't worry about trying to get it on different aircraft types. It does not matter. It's better to get a good APS MCC done in a proper center that also, if possible, can provide you with some help, like a recurrency help. Let's say that you do the MCC and this coronavirus makes the, um, the hiring process almost impossible for the coming six months to a year. Check if they have some kind of program where you can get reasons to sim with them. So maybe pay a very reduced price and come in after a few months do an hour of training or whatever and keep it going like that it that's going to become important as well now i can't overemphasize how important it is to do a good mcc like that is crucial for your chances to get a job especially in a market where they're not hiring much because what we've seen and the indications that we've gotten from the uh, recruitment um at least in my airline from the recruitment uh, department, is that a lot of people are failing basic stuff. They're failing stuff that you should know when you've gone to an MCC course. And the reason for that has been that people have been paying a lot of money to get through the training, the multi engine IR, um, their uh, CPL. But then at towards the end, you know, they haven't got much money. Obviously, they've spent a lot of money. So they thought, let's go for a slightly cheaper MCC. Because up until now, um, the MCC is just a paper. Right? It's not just like a certific certificate that has a skill test. It's only like you need to have done an MCC course somewhere. Uh, so there's been some really, really dodgy centers setting up MCC courses on like fixed base fres uh, Fresnas, um, you know, poor simulators, poor instructors, things like that, just to get people, you know, that signature. And when you have the signature, you can apply. But obviously, when you come for an airline interview, when you come for, 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 a, for a simulator test, they will be judging you on how you work as a team member of a multi-pilot crew, which is what you learn on a good MCC course. So the APS MCC was made, by the way, by my co-founder, Andy O'Shea. He was the father of the APS MCC. He's the one that came up with it. Once again, to increase the quality of the training that people received. He is all about quality. He has, he's been the head of, of, head of training of, of Ryanair for oh, I, 20 years, I think, if it's not more, um, under which time he has been training t tens of thousands of cadets. So um, the, the, the idea with the APS MCC was to increase the quality of the training that people received so they had a higher chance of getting in and getting their precious first airline job, okay? so. That's what you get when you get an APS MCC. There is a skill test in an APS MCC as well. It means you can't fail it. So that's different from all the MCCs. Now, if you fail it, you will just get an MCC certificate, but you won't get an APS MCC certificate, which is what a lot of airlines are now starting to look for because they know and they recognize the higher quality of training. So go for an APS MCC is what I would want to say. 
Oh, right. So, John Ellis, thank you for all the factual info about COVID-19. Now, all right. So, if you're following me on Twitter, which I hope you are, right? Mentor Pilot, no big uh, surprise there. Uh, I have been retweeting stuff that I think is relevant, all right? It means that I've read through um, some informational pieces that coming from good sources and I've been retweeting that. However, I want to put a word of caution out there because I am not a doctor nor am I a medical professional. I'm a pilot and a YouTuber um, and I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to the COVID-19. I, I send out what I think makes sense but I want you to remember that if you want proper sources for this and this is important you look at the World Health Organization website or you go to your government official sites and you get the information from there all right avoid social media as a outlet for any kind of information when it comes to something so important as a pandemic right because there are a million of um, experts out there anyone who has a vested interest in anything will have an opinion and their opinion will be tainted by their vested interest so someone who really doesn't want the lockdown of the country is going to speak about the importance of herd herd immunization as in it's good if a lot of people get it because we're going to have a herd uh, immunization then after a few months and it's going to get better for the the, the uh, you know in the autumn or whatever people who have a vested interest in lockdown which frankly i don't know anyone about but they would be talking for the other for the other side uh so just be very careful and i mean this goes for social media in general don't just be very careful with all of the experts out there and what you share especially what you share because remember that that um very often false information is packaged in a way to make it look sensible and to make it look sensational, something that you want to spread because it's just so good. Like you get so much response if you would spread that. It is made exactly that. You have some of the smartest brains in the world sitting trying to figure out what will people respond to. And when I'm saying that, I mean it. I mean, you have the likes of Facebook that is built on the fact that people are sharing stuff with each other. The more they share, the more people get engaged, the better it is, the more ads you can sell. So social media is by itself very, very dangerous when it comes to giving information, especially about stuff as important as pandemics, politics, things like that. Be careful with what you think. Take sources, many sources, and look at different, like I, like just, I'm just gonna tell you what I do, right? I, I go out, for example, and I read about something that's going on in politics or uh, whatever it might be. I go to CNN and I read it there. All right, now they will have one agenda. Then I go to Al Jazeera and then I read about the similar thing there. And then I go to my Swedish newspapers back in Sweden and I read about the same thing there. Now, they will have vastly different um, headlines, vastly different takes on the same set of facts. But somewhere in between all of these, you're gonna find something that is close to the truth. Right, that's just the way that I do it myself. But I highly recommend that anyone who doesn't want to be enclosed in a social media bubble does that. Read from several different opposite kind of views. Okay, even if you you cannot stand what the other side is saying, we we should be over that by now. We need to realize that the truth is always somewhere in the middle. And uh, as, a, as a thinking, intelligent human being, we need to be careful with the sources and know that we are likely to, to be very biased to just listen to what other people think that think simpler to me, right? Because I have a political opinion. I have a political side of things. I, have, I, I happen to think in a certain way, but I'm also very susceptible to the fact that, yeah, you know, people just listen to what they want to hear. That's the easiest thing. It's always easy to just sit and say, yeah, but you know, everyone else thinks like me, and that's because you're in a bubble. And that's not what I wanted to be talking about. So back to aviation. Uh, I hope you and your family stay healthy. Well, thank you very much for that, Cuban Beauty. They're all great at the moment. Uh, we are staying at home. We're not even um, meeting up with Yaya, our uh, grandma, uh, just to keep her out of harm's way, really. Uh, but everyone in my family is doing great. We'll see what we say after having been cooped up together for two weeks, though. It'll be interesting, but anyway. Joshua McCluskey, mentor. Uh, we are scheduled to leave the US for vacation to Spain on May the 15th. Do you think that uh, tourism will be able to return to the region by then? Uh, March, April, May. 
questionable. Very, very hard to say. Um, it's okay. So I'm no expert once again when it comes to this. But if you look at, for example, China, uh, it's it's likely that China knew about the outbreak in December, latest December. They probably knew it before then, but somewhere around there is when they realized that it was a, a serious thing. So. January, February, March. Now it's better in China. Now they have much less outbreak. They've started to return to life there. So it took them about a good three months in order to to return to the services starting to to, to work. The, the factory work is returning. Um, I don't even think that the flights are, have started yet there. But if that's anything to go by, Spain has been on lockdown since Friday. So if you look three months from then, you know, March, April, May, it's going to be borderline if if this all goes like this now. But be cool, be cool, see what happens, follow the news, and uh, and like if they do, if, if your company cancels the flight, well, at least then you'll get your money back. So don't cancel it, like wait and see what happens. Uh, Fred Hill, thank you very much. Uh, same for, to Valala Media and Robert Bright and Spirus G and Ags. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, love these these uh, super stickers. They're cool. Fred Hill, what's going on with the cracks on the 737NG? And the ones in the pickle forks, um, they're all being checked. Like they have an interval of, you know, the older, the ones that are about 10 years that have a certain amount of cycles are being checked. And the ones that they find uh, cracks in are being retrofitted, are being fixed. Um, so, so that's it. It's 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 an ongoing um, inspection of the pickle forks to make sure that that nothing um, serious have happened to them. So I haven't heard anything about pickle forks for months and months now, which would indicate that it's probably under control. Uh, Danko. Hello, I'm passing the medical pilot test class 2 tomorrow. I'll do the psychological test. Can you give me more information? P.S. I'm, I'm in love with you. Man, I'm in... Am I love you? <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Danko. Uh, right, um, the medical tests I've done several videos about. You can go back and just search for medical mentor and you'll find at least two episodes where I interviewed a, uh, a medical uh, examiner. When it comes to psychological tests, um, it's not much I can say. You will be subjected to tests that you need to pass and just make sure that you're well rested when you come there, that you're honest on them um, and that you don't get too nervous because that's not going to help. You know, that, that just freezes you up a little bit. Now, um, we haven't opened up the airline pilot club yet for memberships. When we do, we will be able to give you um, suitability tests there, an indicative assessment of your suitability already. Um, but it's not opened yet, but it will be. We will open. Like right now, um, we are going to give you much more information about this. Those of you who have signed up to the newsletter, the newsletter is on my website. Uh, you can find it on um the, the newsletters that are like there's um, um, information pieces that are put up on my website on mentorpilot.com you can sign up to the newsletter on every single one of them and we will send out more information now, obviously this this outbreak is going to affect our launch because duh like right now is we're in the middle of a of, of an international crisis but we are still working we're still going we will still try to help as much people as we can and like i said it's likely that we are going to change the perspective a little bit from coming in starting to help you to get ready to get into flight schools funding all of that uh into uh, getting you ac accurate information but uh we're still working on how we're going to solve this so adrian uh greenie just scrolled way down here. Let's see. <laughs> uh, Adrian Greeny, there we go. With airlines bleeding money at the moment, will prices for tickets go through the roof uh, when it returns to normal in order to reclaim losses? No, no, no. The airlines are going to scramble to try to get passengers back flying, like to get back to travel patterns. Um, I think what they're most scared of is for the travel patterns to be disrupted. As in, there was travel patterns established in Europe. People were going on you know, vacation trips to Milan to do shopping. Uh, we're going down to Barcelona for the weekend. We're doing things like that. 
the, what they're dead scared of is for people after this to rethink and like, hmm, well, maybe actually it was nice to be at the pub instead of well, we just stay home and for people not to travel. And of course, if they would just hike the prices up to three times the normal price, that would, that would actually solidify any changes in behavioral patterns. Um, so what I, would suggest, what I would guess is a huge discount as in when when the when things start going back to normal you'll be able to fly for close to nothing just to get people back flying and get confidence back and see that everything is working and then um then the prices will go back to normal but it depends also you know if it turns out that for example a lot of competition has disappeared well then then prices will go up because they want to jack out the, their uh, profits or get back the losses, and they will be able to because there's no one else flying, uh, no one else competing. So, like, th this is why it's impossible to say exactly what's going to happen, um, but that something will happen and that we will have some kind of effect of it is very likely. Okay. Uh, Henry Curtis, my friend just bought a domestic flight in the USA just because it was cheap. He doesn't live where his destination is. Is he being irresponsible? Um, that, that, like I said, you have to follow the advice that is being given by the government where you live. Now, I know in the US that uh, Mr. Trump is, is giving all kinds of advices, uh, but uh, but I, I'm not going to tell, I'm going to say that people are irresponsible. People are irresponsible when they know they're doing something wrong. All right, when they don't know what the right thing to do is and they don't do it, that's irresponsible. So if there's no travel ban inside of the US and there's a discount on a flight and there's somewhere he wants to go and there's no guidance on not going there, then he's not irresponsible. He's just taking advantage of something. Now, if he does that and tomorrow the government comes out and say that no we are going to suspend travel or we're going to advise against travel within the continental usa then he needs to cancel otherwise he's irresponsible all right so that's a gamble that he's taking at the moment but we're like we're looking at the co right now in in spanish state media there there's there there are Video cameras everywhere filming people who are not following the curfew, right? And they are being vilified. Yeah, they're showing how the police are, are not arresting, but telling people off, screaming at them to go into their houses. Uh, people that are like, you know, bars that are being kept open even though they're not supposed to um, are being busted down. And that's being shown as being irresponsible. And that is irresponsible because they're breaking rules that they knew existed. So it's a different thing. E. Simon, current status of the pilot funding program. Yeah, like I said, Simon, um, given the changing climate right now, we can't go out and say a definitive, okay? Um, the, the need is still going to be there, and I firmly believe that the need will be there eventually, but right now um, it, it, would be, it would be responsible of us to start to... to push for something with banks that are seeing an industry that is bleeding, okay? Because banks know about risk. So right now we're we're holding back a little bit on the funding issue. We still have a lot of progress done with insurances for training, which is kind of, which is very, very relative, oh, sorry, relative, which is very, very um, important right now. It would have been really important for people to have. So that part is still ongoing. Um, and also the indicative assessment is going to be extremely important, even more so than ever right now. The funding, um, we will continue to work on it when we feel that the environment is, is more realistic to do that. Simon, 8270. Uh, until recently, I thought you would have to get, to get paid a minimum amount during this time, but clearly not. Must be in your contract a little something to help you this time. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing like we in order to keep the base open because the base is a, is now a seasonal base uh, we had to agree to take two months of unpaid leave All right, that was before the whole coronavirus thing so we are now seasonal workers so we work for 10 months and we're off for two that was something that we agreed to and during those two months we are officially unemployed which means that we can we can apply for unemployment benefits but that's it um, which means it's yeah we do get money um, a fraction of it from the state if we if we uh, apply for it um, but uh, as you can imagine it's um, it wouldn't it wouldn't keep the it wouldn't pay our bills basically it would be help it's helpful it always is but but that's the way it is but what I'm telling you guys it's not that right I don't need 
that I, I the channel and I'm so happy to be able to say that the work that I've done for the last five years with the YouTube channel with the Mentor Aviation app um, with my Instagram account with all of that it really helps now okay it's a second economic leg to stand on which is good enough for me and my family to survive on right and it's a fantastic thing to be able to say. But I do want to emphasize and show my gratitude towards the people who have made that possible. And I could only like, what I'm doing right now is I'm pushing for more perks for my Patreons. So for example, I created a Discord server um, just last week, which my Patreons are able to get. When you become a Patreon, you will get access to a special Discord server where we'll do chats, maybe live streams and stuff like that, but mostly so that they can hang out with each other. Um, it's another perk. My wife is looking at, as uh, she's working a lot with my Patreons, create even better things for them. Because what I really want, what I would really want is to be able to do less sponsored content, less sponsored videos. And have more patrons so that I know okay I know from the patrons what kind of income the uh, channel will have so the more patrons I have the, the less sponsored stuff I need to do and uh, that means that I can do shorter videos like if I see something funny I can I can do something five six minute video whatever which is something that like I wouldn't be able to do on, on a sponsored video. There's a lot of things that I can do thanks to the fact that I have such a dedicated and fantastic base of patrons because Patreon is, is, is hugely important for me. And, and it's the same for someone like Flight Shops, for example. Um, if you haven't checked out his channel, you definitely should. Like, you will not get better uh, and more professionally produced Avgeek content anywhere else. Like, you have to check out... If you're into general aviation in any way, you have to check out Flight Shops. But he also survives largely on Patreon support. Uh, and he does that as his full-time job. Um, so that's where I would like to be, to come, and that's why I'm I'm, I'm talking so much about Patreons, <laughs> especially now. Cool, uh, John Mike eight forty one. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, Wheelan Vids Wheelan Vids one. Hi mentor, how are you? I am surprisingly good. In your experience, would you know how much it can take to get through modular training? Would 40,000 40, euro get you t get you far? Yeah. Um, 40,000 euros has been enough for some people that I know. Um, if you go to training in, for example, Poland, um, certain schools there are very high quality, but still very low cost, you can do it. Um, it is possible, right? You can kind of, you know, jack, just pull yourself up and get yourself through with that kind of money if you're doing it a modular way, in a smart way. Now, you're going to have to take up a lot of responsibility yourself. So there's a lot of, of, of like uh, ground school training that you'll be able to have to do yourself, maybe distance learning. Um, you're going to have to be very smart when it comes to finding high quality instructors in cheap flight schools. Um, but you can get, get through with that. Yes, you can. Um, otherwise, above 50k, you're pretty much uh, guaranteed um, to have an easier, an easier ride through. Uh, uh, um, mm, mm, mm. So, let's see, uh, Arsenia S, thank you very much, that's hugely generous of you. Uh, Hi Mentor, thanks for all your great videos. My mates are asking me, why do I need to check in for a flight? I see airlines doing waste work. I understand that there are good reasons behind it, but uh, I don't care all aspects of why this is always done that way. Uh, okay, so... Um, there are many different reasons for this. Um, you need to check in, as you notice, you can check in online now. And that's just because the airline needs to know how much passengers they're going to have on every given flight. Okay, They need to know that from, a, from a, for example, a, um, a performance point of view. Like we, If we know how many booked um, passengers we have, and we know how many checked in passengers we have, we also know what kind of weight we'll have, so we'll know how much fuel we need to take. Right? So the, 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 the checking online helps a lot. And then comes the security aspect of it. We need to know what passengers we have on board. Under any circumstances, if something were to happen with an aircraft, we need to know who is on board, where they were seating, who they were traveling with. And also, if someone chooses not to turn off for the flight, 
we need to know that that person is not traveling and if they have baggage for example that package needs to be removed from the aircraft before the flight because you only can travel with baggage if you are on the flight yourself that's something that came out of the Lockerbie disaster among other things um, so the, the the checking in and the fact that you that that you have to be physically present and have to have been shown to be present on the flight serves both you know several different uh, important reasons also recently i did a video about weight and balance uh, you know how you get ad allocated a seat or how you can choose a seat now that determines how our weight and balance is to make sure that the aircraft is properly balanced before we take off um, and that's also done through and during the, the check-in process. So no, it's not just extra work. Believe me, if there's one thing that the pilot that the airlines want to get rid of, it's slack, extra stuff. If they could skip it, they would. But the check-in process, no, that will always be there. Um, Sandra McCusker, something in support of the inspirational with you. <laughs> Thank you. I will do what I can. Frank Vignads, uh, Vig Vignads. Hi Mentor, I planned a trip from Amsterdam to DPS in June with Emirates. How likely is it that it will not be cancelled now with the Corona crisis? Like once again, Frank, it's impossible for me to say. It depends on what where this virus goes. Now, the more into the summer, the more into the heat you get, the less virus cases we will likely see. Uh, most likely, if this actually acts, you know does like a normal flu virus does now however SARS for example I think was not dependent on um, on the season it didn't care about the heat so we will see if they if the, the, the amount of viruses drops over the summer in that case it's very possible that you can uh, if it doesn't then we might still be in lockdown by that time it's impossible to say but we cannot like June is better than May um, that's several that's four months away so um, I'd say that there's a higher chance for that, but uh, but l right now I wouldn't I wouldn't you know place my bets on, on anything when it comes to to international travel unfortunately. Uh, Gurai, thank Don ATPLs this week. I promise to be active on the app. Well, perfect. We need people like you. Uh, there's a lot of nervous flyers that are using the app, and I want to emphasize that for nervous flyers as well. And they need people like you to explain the the theory behind um, behind flying. Um, when they have questions and I'm not in there and I can't answer myself or Ava or Mel or Boeing Bill or any of the other professional pilots that are always in the chat or at least at one point during the day, um, then people like you are crucial for the survival of the uh, of the app and for the. And by the way, if you have the app, guys, this is another huge favor I want to ask from you. If you have the app and you like it and you like the news function and you're using it, please go into App Store and rate it and give it a review, okay? And if you have used it and you think that there's something that could be better, don't rate it or put it in the review. Give it as, as feedback to me. I read those emails, every single one of them, okay? So if there's something that I can improve on, I might not be able to answer you. I'm going to say that straight away. Uh, but 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 I will read it, okay? So if there's something that I can improve, I will. But I need more positive reviews. If we're going to get the app moving, we need more people to be able to see it and to associate it. And when people search for aviation in the App Store, I want Mentor Aviation to come up there, um, high up on the list. And that can only happen if you guys come in and help me to, to rate it and review it. So thank you very much. Uh, Electro Fiction, thank you. Long time subscriber, you never spoken, uh, but never spoken before. That's fine. Uh, from my family to your family, we've got your back. Take care. Well, thank you very much. Um, very, very appreciated. Um, now, I I am blessed. Uh, I am very, very fortunate to be in a position where I am. I had a good job for 18 years. Um, I'm in a good position. I'm in a good house with a fantastic family. So don't feel sorry for me. That's not what I'm trying to say here. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that the support that you guys have given me through the through Patreon and through here um, helps me to concentrate on what's really my hobby, which is to do this YouTube channel for you guys. Um, if that wasn't the case, then I would have to spend my time maybe going and trying to instruct in um, uh, flight instructor positions somewhere, maybe down in Barcelona or something like that during downtime like this. And I couldn't focus on doing YouTube videos, but because of the support that you guys have given me, because of that, I can actually spend my time 
thinking of YouTube videos, researching for YouTube videos, doing live streams, creating apps, doing stuff like that. So I just want to say to you guys that it's highly appreciated that you let me continue to play in the way that I do. Like, it's, it's great. Um, and thank you for being a long time subscriber. Leo Bruce, all the best in these tricky times, Mentor. Well, thank you. We will be doing the best out of this and I will make videos about how you should be thinking in order to make the best out of this as well. Blobs, um, Brit Blitteract, Petter Rocks. Yeah, it could be a good, that could be a good brand. It sounds like a rock band actually, so. <laughs> well, aviation for everyone is my uh, is, is the motto and absolutely fantastic as well. And absolutely fantastic actually works. Now, I couldn't for the life of me find my, um, uh, my Inop t-shirt, my absolutely fantastic t-shirt and in trust we trust and I also have a new I have a new t-shirt on my brand store on Teespring called Posit um, Positive Attitude with a, with a PFD showing positive attitude. You should check that out as well. I think here actually if you go down and you look below the YouTube video there should be uh, links to, to those um, uh, to those items as well. So if you want an absolutely fantastic t-shirt it is there as well. Um, Natalie Olson, in Wisconsin old schools, K-12 has to close by March 18th. Uh, these kids are expected to do school online with content their teachers provide. Is Spain doing something similar, by the way, in my birthday? And this is a great gift. First of all, happy birthday, Natalie. Great to have you here. Great that you didn't miss the live stream this time. So um, now virtually all of the world, all of the now 1436 people who are watching this right now, uh, I would like you to join me in singing happy birthday for Natalie. So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Natalie. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Hopefully at least a couple of hundred uh, sang for you now. Um, Natalie is one of my long, well, one of my most uh, like active subscribers, both here in the app and the Patreon as well. Um, so yeah, um, we, to answer your question, my kids have gotten like 50 pages of homework to do. They didn't have any Skype sessions. They don't have any online courses because they're only seven and 12, sorry, seven and 10. But, um, but they do have quite a lot of homework that we, the parents are suspected to do, which actually doesn't matter because we're home sitting here on our asses anyway. So, um, enjoy your birthday, Natalie. Um, uh, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. I hope you enjoyed my horrible singing skills. Um, I will not be torturing you guys with that anymore. Welcome back that. Thank you for the coffee. Actually, mine is getting cold here, but I'll, I'll add cheers to that. Uh, Fred Hill, sounds like you might have to do a check ride. Yeah, it's possible. And this also adds to the complexity, guys. <laughs> See, I dropped, I dropped almost 100 uh, people watching when I started singing. That, that tells, tells you something about my singing voice. Uh, right, uh, sounds like you have to do a check ride. Yeah, and this adds to the complexity of the situation. So imagine that an airline set decides, like SAS now have done, to put their entire fleet on the ground. Right? And imagine now that this becomes a lockdown that takes more than two weeks, which is what we have in Spain. It stretches into a few months. What we'll have then is you will have a lot of pilots going out of check. Now, if those, are, if those pilots, they need to be able to come to a check center in order to do their check. So this becomes could become like a logistical nightmare to start to get people back into check when they've been out of check for a while, um, when there's thousands of flights or thousands of pilots that are involved to do hundreds of flights, this becomes a real problem. So um, last thing I saw is that the ASA is aware of this. Uh, they will be putting in emergency measures to make sure that the airlines in absolute last circumstance can use maybe not level D simulators, maybe some simpler simulators in order to do recurrent training out in the network. They could maybe contract in a special like fixed base simulator. I don't know exactly what, but it's going to be on a base to base um on a case-to-case -case basis, basically, where an airline could just to get stuff back up running for a very short term period, do uh, get permission to do special check rides. I've even seen that they could consider doing check rides in aircraft if necessary, um, which would be interesting to do. That probably doesn't apply to a 737 operator, but some smaller operators could be able to do that. Um, 
so we'll see there's a lot of things that have never happened before that no one really knows how to handle so uh it, it's an interesting time ahead for sure sergeant m thank you very much ryan s um okay so ryan s something happened to your message it was eliminated potentially um not suitable um i'll ask um I'll ask my administrator to see why that happened. Mikas, Billy Kvesius, thank you for your interesting post. Thank you. Uh, Court Ellis, safe, safe. Thank you very much. I will do my best. Uh, can't do much else when I'm sitting here cooked up in the house. That Jeffrey guy, thank you for your quality content. Uh, I jumped again here. Okay, thank you for your call it the content. I have a question. What are some of the different handling characteristics between a Cessna versus a 707? Or are they similar in handling despite their size? No, they're not very similar in their handling. Uh, a Cessna is, uh, of course, very, very light. Um, it, I mean, there are some similarities, but one of the big differences, for example, is that when you turn a Cessna, you have to, as you turn the aileron, also input rudder to coordinate the turn. Otherwise, you will either be slipping or skidding in the turn. Um, in the 737, the yaw damper does that for us. Um, so you're just turning like you do with a car wheel and it, the aircraft flies a perfectly coordinated turn. That's one thing. Other things, of course, has to do with the pure inertia of the 737 and the fact that the 737 has two undermounted engines, which means that as you add thrust, it has a tendency to pitch up, so you need to pitch forward. On the Cessna, you have the propeller straight in front of you. You have a very small tendency like that. But you also have a slipstream thing that comes with the Cessna, the fact that the slip, as you add thrust, you might have to actually put some rudder in in order to keep it from from uh, jawing when you do so. There are several, like it's very, very hard. It's a little bit like comparing a, um, well, I, I don't even know, like a, like a small car to a huge truck. Like the, 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 uh, the, the original things in order to keep it on the road with the steering wheel is the same, but everything else is different. Um, Aaron, who's that? Lots of love during this trying time, well, thank you. John Ellis, uh, agree about social media and uh, multiple sources. Thank you. Um, hope more people do that, actually. That's something that this generation really need to learn. Irene, thank you. Tina Terras as well. Uh, Jason Potwin, do EU airlines prefer all candidates, so a candidate who did all training in the EASA framework, like everything? Uh, my plan is to do Canadian PPL, CBL, EASA conversion for Olsen ADB. Not, not necessarily. Uh, providing that you have the papers, um, and that you have like leaving school certificates or, or a contact address so they, they, an airline could contact your training organization in Canada if needed. Um, I don't think that there's a problem. We take a lot of, we have previously taken a lot of, of people with converted licenses in from Brazil, for example, um, from the US regularly as well. So I don't think that that necessarily is an issue. Now it's only always easier for an airline to to contact like flight schools to track your progress if you've done it in flight schools that they know. But if that's not an option, that's not an option. Just make sure that you do quality training in the schools that you go to and that you find a quality training center like um, yeah, CIE or OSM or something like that when you get back to Europe and do it there so that they can kind of quality stamp your training, right? Joseph Charles, hi. Have you ever done an actual emergency descent, an emergency descent, or experienced one? Do airline pilots only learn this on the simulator, or do they practice them in the air? I've never had one. They're very, very rare. Okay, very rare, and we only practice those in the simulator because doing it in the air would be painful and bad for everything involved. So, no, I have touch wood. Uh, never experienced one in real life. We do train them extensively in the simulator uh, in order to be able to do them like a clockwork in case it would happen. Um, guys, um, don't send any more super chat questions now because I have been doing this for over an hour. And my voice is starting to turn go out, so I want to finish this off. I want to take some questions as well from the normal chat. Uh, Oleg, 250, on a 737, what's the difference between the uh, command and com control we're steering autopilot? Can you explain? Yeah, so command, um, in command, the aircraft will do whatever we put into the MCP. 
the mode control panel. So if we wanted to follow in, if we in command and we put heading select, the aircraft is going to follow the heading. If we put uh, lower altitude, we set level change, the aircraft is going to reduce the thrust and it's going to follow the speed, pitching down and descend down to the altitude that we've set. So command is the autopilot mode that follows whatever we put into the mode control panel. Control wheel steering is a very, it's a lower altitude, sorry, autopilot mode. It's a simpler autopilot mode. In control wheel steering, we set a pitch or we set a roll angle and we press control wheel steering and the aircraft just continues doing that. And if I put input into the steering wheel, so the yoke, it will continue to do that. So if I pitch up five degrees with control wheel steering and leave it there, it's going to keep five degrees no matter what happens. Okay. If I push it forward and I put it into two and a half degrees level flight, it will continue to doing that. If I put it to a 25 degrees bank angle and leave it, it's going to sit with 25 degrees bank angle. So it's just like, you know, the most simple type of autopilot that you can get even on a Cessna. That's what this is. All right. Very, very rarely used. The only time that we really use control with steering is if we are in um, heavy uh, so severe turbulence in order to set an attitude and to not chase the altitude just to have a constant attitude as we go through it Egidius uh, Pugcialis um, This corona situation might also have very positive effects considering global warning situation for the suspension of transport will have very positive impact for our planet It will serve as a fresh breeder. Don't you think? Yeah, no, there's no question about that. Like the, the oil price has gone down for a reason. That's because people are not driving their cars. People are not flying aircraft. So there's no question that this will um, that this will kind of help from an environmental point of view. And what the environmental uh, people are hoping as well is that it will change the travel pattern of people so that people will not be... Um, be flying as much. They will find out that maybe I don't need to go to, to Milan for shopping over the weekend. Maybe we should stay home and work from home as much as possible and not having to take the car to work every single day just to do stuff that we could do at home. So there are some potential very positive benefits of this. Now, if it just stops travel for three months and then it resumes again, it's just like, um, yeah, it's just like a cough. You know, <coughs> and then it continues again from an environmental perspective. Now, the, in order to save the environment long term, we need long term good uh, technical solutions that will enable us as a civilization to continue to function even if, um, you know, with less use of fossil fuels and stuff. So we need more uh, natural power sources. We need better battery uh, use from from stuff that doesn't kill the environment to actually make the batteries um, and we need better manufacturing we need like there's loads and loads of stuff that we need to do in order to actually come to sustainable um, environmental world um, unfortunately but yeah you do have a point we are going to see dramatic increases in in air quality in china for example uh, and in large parts of the the world that we haven't seen for decades so it, it'll probably be a very interesting thing for scientists to study once this is all over. So Daniel Trappe, fancy making a video of where you jump on into an A320 simulator as a first officer without a type rating? Yeah, I would love to do that. I'm not sure that it's suited for YouTube, though. I might make an absolute fool of myself. So um, we shall see. But it's definitely on my to-do list. Now, there is a last Super Chat question here as well. And as always, I can't read it for some reason. It's hidden beneath my um, view here. So I'm going to try to find it here in, this, in normal chat. Um, there we go. I'm starting my PPL training this spring and the tips for the first flying lessons. Yeah, don't worry. Right. The PPL, um, they, they know that you've never flown before when you start your... So they're not expecting you to know much. What I always tell people who's about to start the PPL is try to get your theory material as early as possible so you can read through the theoretical course. That way you will be much better prepared um, to be, you know, to, to get the most out of your training sessions. So, you know, do that. Prepare yourself theoretically, but then just enjoy no, there's, there's a lot of just lovely flying to be had during your PPL training. Cool. 
So let's see some questions here before we go from the normal chat. Love your channel. Well, that's always nice to have. Quality stream. That's great. What's your favorite airline? Uh, yeah, I, given that I work for an airline um, and they don't want me to talk about them, not even mention them in these circumstances, I'm not going to be able to say that. Okay. Uh, I've flown for long haul. I can say that I've flown with a lot of different ones. And I think the ones that I've enjoyed the most is Qatar, actually. They did a fantastic job when we flew over to from Barcelona over to um, Krabi last year. That was that was great. I flew both on a 787 and an Airbus 350. Great. Are you flying for SAS? No, I am not. Um, Sarf Sandy, just wondering, did you go to college mentor or just do flight school? I went to a aviation college, Sweden. It was actually called the Aviation College of Sweden, uh, which would run by what is now OSM Flight Academy. Uh, and it was probably the best period of my life. Well, actually now is a pretty great period of my life as well, to be honest. But doing that training as part of my schooling was good. But I don't have a college degree, if that's what you're asking for. So, Metropilot, what do you think about games like X-Plane and FSX? Also, save, save. They seem to very cool. Like, we have X-Plane 11. Unfortunately, there's some kind of bug. My my uh, my uh, son has it. We have a full yoke, throttle quadrant, and uh, um, pedals as well. And we downloaded it the other day, and it just doesn't work. Like, you just see some kind of blur. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll see what, what I see. Very, very frustrating. We've, we have... Uh, removed it and de -down re downloaded it several times, it just doesn't work. So, there must be some, some plugin or something that is not good. Guys, that's it. That's one hour and 10 minutes. That's officially a record when it comes to live streams. I love doing this with you. I'm so happy that there were so many of you that decided to follow this live stream. Uh, now, what I want to do with a trend to, to do when I finish off these live streams uh, is just ask you to please come to the Mentor Aviation app afterwards. If you haven't downloaded already, do so. I'm gonna go down and chill out a little bit in the chat. I always do. But also consider becoming a Patreon, all right? Consider becoming a Patreon. Uh, if you if you like what this channel does and you want to be a long-term supporter of the channel, you can go in for $3 a month, whatever you feel like you want to give. Everything is appreciated. All of that, if you go in, will give you preview access to my videos. It means that you can come with feedback directly to me about the videos. You can tell me if there's something that you should be doing more or less of. There's loads of perks like that. So go in, check out patreon.com slash mentorpilot. And here is the Mentor Aviation app. Now, fortunately, this is an old version. I have to upgrade this. I have a much lighter and nicer um, look to it now. But inside of it, you don't have to pay for anything. Like the, the app is free to download, the chat is free, the uh, live streams are free, the, um, um, the news are free, but you can also buy these collections, which are basically instructional videos, okay? It is me instructing you on things like the, yeah, engine failure of the takeoff, for example. And I filmed it in 360, which means that it you can, you know, scroll around using your finger to see what we're doing in the cockpit. And that's specifically helpful if you are getting the full setup uh, collection where I show you how to set up a 737 from when it's cold and dark until it's ready to taxi. Or how we work together during an engine failure, wind shear escape maneuver, Cat 3 ILS approach, go around, things like that. So you can either scroll it, you can move the phone around, or you can put it into a Google Cardboard headset and it will feel like you're sitting inside of the cockpit on the jump seat together with me when I'm doing these, um, these uh, exercises. So, you know, if you're interested in that, those um, there are several different uh, added courses, but if you get the all-in-one course, it's $20, it gives you two hours of, of instruction with me on the 737, which I think that you would enjoy. So that's it, guys. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are. Take care of yourself. And like I said, follow the um, the advice of your government and the World Health Organization when it comes to the COVID-19. Bye-bye.